little beanie babies and welcome back to butchery 101 today we're talking about rabbits if you've been following this channel for a little while or if you follow me on tiktok or instagram i'm sure you saw all of that rabbit butchery content so um i'll link uh, the full tutorial up here or maybe it'll be here. I'm not really sure how it's gonna go down in editing But that way you can get right over to some straight-up rabbit butchery But I did want to take a moment to talk about some factual things about rabbit and answer a couple questions that I saw out there on the internet that I think are pretty common concerns because rabbit is such an uncommon protein these days. So without much further ado, here are some rabbit questions and answers from the internet. Number one, what does rabbit meat taste like? Solid question. Here are a few answers that I saw out there for it. They called it plain. The person who had posted that answer also said something about how it's a hassle to eat rabbit because of all the bones, which like I can see where they're coming from because rabbits do have bones I feel like they roasted their rabbit whole which is that's fair if you want to if you're roasting it whole and you feel like oh there's like there's a lot of ribs the rabbit's collarbone um, isn't attached to anything else and so it's really easy for that particular bone to just get kind of lost in the rest of your eating experience which is kind of annoying for sure but I do think that if you were to learn how to break down your own rabbit cook it in separate pieces or debone some pieces, it wouldn't be very bony at all. Other people have said that it tastes like chicken. That's solid. Um, and then somebody else mentioned that it tastes like mild pork. Like if you think of the mildest pork cuts out there, that that's pretty comparable to rabbit. And like, honestly, yeah, like I could, I would endorse that as well. I feel like I've had very similar um, eating experiences when it comes to like pork tenderloin versus rabbit lean muscles will will be very similar So generally when people ask me that question I do say that it does taste very similar to chicken to to accomplish two things um, one I want people I hope people aren't intimidated by the idea of eating rabbit like I think rabbit is an uncommon meat in the United States that's a shame um, because rabbit is super delicious and very good for you. The other reason why I compare it to chicken is that many of the recipes that you would want to use for chicken translate beautifully to, to rabbit. So braising like a coco van, deep frying or like pan frying works out really well with rabbit. As do brines, a confit works super well for rabbit. So that's a really good way to try out rabbit for the first time or like um, if you're looking for an avenue through which to try something or you know switch up your rabbit game if like say you're doing a lot of stews take a chicken recipe that you believe in that you have tried and know or at the very least are getting from like a responsible source and try it with your rabbit i would i would bet you that it would work out just as well number two why don't more americans eat more rabbit why isn't rabbit meat popular in the u.s a couple of the answers were cuteness that came up a lot which is fair it's hard it's hard to imagine like killing something that you have like affection for and eating it somebody said like pets like because people have uh rabbits are a very common pet to have that it's really difficult to want to eat him i mean obviously like you wouldn't be eating your pet but if you i imagine that if i had a pet pig maybe it would be difficult to conceptualize eating one. Somebody once mentioned religion and I don't really know what that's about. So if anybody here knows why any religion would like not endorse eating rabbit or if there is a religion, a popular religion out there that like condemns eating rabbit, let me know. I'm really curious about that one because I know that there are a lot of um, faith-based reasons for not eating certain animal products. So I get that these are decisions that people are making based on like their faith, uh, but I've never heard of one that specifically addressed rabbits. So yeah, let me know in the comments or like DM me or email or whatever. I'm very curious about that too expensive was another reason that people ventured and I get that because it's so uncommon and like I think because of like the way that it's produced it is typically going to be more expensive than say like your very very cheapest chicken I personally will only ever get rabbit from a wonderful local farm so and they you know they charge commiserate to like being able to like keep up their 
uh, their super sustainable system and like a healthy lifestyle, happy and healthy lifestyle for themselves and their family. So I understand that they're gonna charge a certain amount for their rabbit. I get it. Someday in the future, we're gonna do a video on how to, how to purchase and eat really high quality meat as much as you can whilst if you are not someone who makes a lot of money. I am someone who has not made a lot of money in my life and I still try to eat well. So we'll explore that in a whole nother video. Somebody cited the feed conversion radio ratio, which I think they had bad data because as far, because every other article that I've read about the feed conversion ratio for rabbits has been a glowing endorsement of rabbit meat. For those who don't know, feed conversion ratio or FCR is the amount of feed that you have to give to an animal for that animal to produce a pound of meat for humans to consume. So there's like a, a, a certain FCR for beef, a certain FCR for chicken and pork. The higher the FCR figure is generally the less sustainable that particular product is. Beef has a bad reputation on that front, like it's not awesome. And then um, tuna is one. I know this isn't butchery exactly, but tuna has one of the highest feed conversion ratios. It's really unsustainable, even the farmed stuff. So yeah, just for the record, rabbit, as far as I know, does have a really low feed to conversion ratio, and therefore that is a actually a really good reason to eat rabbit. Somebody else said people are people are eating less protein, so they're drawing the line at rabbit. They, they cited quote unquote compassion for all living beings and rabbit is a being that they are not willing to eat. I mean, every answer is valid because that I feel like is a personal question of like whether or not you personally feel comfortable eating meat from any certain animal and like what your relationship is to those animals and like how you feel about how they were raised and, uh, in terms of like sustainability and ecological impact and then also you know like human rights impacts so i get it that's that's legit it is funny to me to draw the line right at rabbit because that's all relative i personally think pigs are super cute i also think that when a human being cares for livestock animals as if they were pets like spoils them a little bit takes very good care of them. I think that like affection for the animal translates to a happy and healthy life for that animal and therefore really good product for the rest of us. Something though I did want to bring up that I haven't really seen as far as an answer goes and this is something that comes up in many other conversations that I've had in terms of like unpopular sources of meat like goats or like bison or ostrich or whatever pretty much anything that isn't the big three like beef pork and chicken and people will often ask in these conversations they'll be like well why aren't people eating goat or why aren't people eating buffalo and like it's such a weird question to ask it that way i think the question itself is framed improperly and the thing that we don't really talk about when we center the other protein like a goat or rabbit is that we don't think about the economic support that pork beef and chicken industries have in the united states so for all three of those proteins all those all three of those industries they have at the national level they have advocacy and like marketing groups and lobbyists as well but that's a whole nother thing that are tasked with creating demand for that supply so for example there's like you will have heard of something like the national pork checkoff or the beef checkoff or the national chicken council all of those organizations are meant to drum up interest in the general public for those proteins that the industries are producing and so it's meant to like justify that size of an industry for each of those proteins but not necessarily to help educate or endorse environmentalism or health or anything of that nature like their end goal is only to sell you that industry's product and you know these companies you might know them by their marketing slogans but you know them um, so for example the phrase the other white meat when referring to pork that came from one of these advocacy groups same with beef it's what's for dinner also them which damn that's a catchy one the incredible edible egg i'm not saying that these are necessarily bad institutions that these are like bad systems or whatever but i will say that it is funny that there is no national goat checkoff and there's no there's no rabbit checkoff like there are small like breeding associations and like those are the organizations that would naturally grow into an industry advocacy group but they don't exist just yet 
Um, so until you start to see um, rabbit commercials during the Super Bowl, I don't really know what to tell you. And you can form whatever opinions you want. Like, please feel free to Google pork check off, beak check off, and find out for yourself what it is that those guys are trying to do. But something I do want to bring up about the National Chicken Council, because this happened very recently. It happened within the last year or so. It actually, it happened during the pandemic that the National Chicken Council asked the USDA and OSHA to remove caps on production speeds. And the thing about production speed is that the faster you go on the production line, the more dangerous it is for you. Like the harder it is for the workers to put up with it. And this is not like a bunch of like lazy people. This is, they're doing like many birds in like under half an hour and working very long days. And the reason why you would want to raise the speed at which you are allowed to ask them to work is that you want to raise the level of production that they are making for your company. But the reason why regulations on production speeds exist are to protect the workers from the injuries that are inevitable from ramping up the speed. So that's something that the National Chicken Council requested the USDA to do in this last year. And a couple senators, Cory Booker and Marsha Fudge, both wrote letters, or rather they wrote letters and then other senators signed onto it, imploring the USDA to please ignore that request because they were speaking up on behalf of the workers in those plants. Shout out to Cory Booker and Marsha Fudge for like looking out for actual workers. I don't mean to like color your idea of what these industries do. I'm just saying that they exist and that's something that we don't talk about and that's a through line that is not often there. Question number three, is is rabbit meat bad for health slash how nutritious is rabbit meat i'm pretty much making up any excuse to like put these nails on camera rabbit meat is very nutritious uh, and i do keep leaning on this comparison to chicken but if you look at the valley farmstead website they included information from a lot of studies about meat nutritional breakdowns and rabbit and chicken are like kind of the same in terms of like protein versus fat um, and other nutrients so just to say it's just as healthy as chicken wherever that falls in your idea of what is and isn't healthy so the concern is that your body that your that your digestive system would like suffer and therefore the rest of your body would suffer under the amount of protein that you get like the high ratio of protein that you would get out of this meat but i feel like if you're eating a diverse diet that is to say you're not only consuming rabbit meat then that would counter that effect i don't really know what the concern is there it sounds like they are imagining a scenario wherein you would only be eating rabbit meat and that's it and it just i don't know a scenario wherein that would actually be happening for a long-term basis that you would need to be concerned about your rabbit consumption like wouldn't you be having like a side of carrots or something <laughs> But like seriously, like wouldn't you be eating other things too? I don't know. It's that was a weird one to me, gang. Um, so if you see that out there, like rabbit meat is fine to eat. Just it's just like chicken. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, and if you are worried about like the leanness, um, like how lean rabbit meat is and you really want to add more fat that's a great time to add in fat from like your pork roasts or your beef roasts i often have like a, a little stockpile of rendered lard or rendered tallow fat keeps for a good long time and there's a ton of flavor especially if you get it from another meat source and that's a great time to bust that out so that you can add a little bit of extra fat to whatever lean meat you're eating I think it's a great opportunity. Number four, what's the meat of the rabbit called? I saw like a lot of joking answers to this that were like, yo, you call him Ted or like Donnie or whatever. But all jokes aside, I think this is referring to the phenomenon where we have different words for meat than the animal that it came from. So for example, there's like venison instead of deer. We say pork instead of pig. 
beef instead of cow. But you know, like chicken, we just call chicken, turkey, the same deal, rattlesnake, whatever. There's not a euphemism for each of these for each of these species, which is totally cool with me because like we just still just say the animal's name and then there's no dissociation between the meat that we are eating and the animal from which it came. Um, so I actually kind of appreciate that. When we rename meat, it adds an extra layer of obfuscation that isn't really necessary and kind of doesn't really benefit anybody necessarily. Let me know. Also, do you guys remember when you learned that pork came from an animal, that pork is pig? I do definitely remember that moment myself. It was in second grade, someone brought in a book <laughs> that was probably like some vegan propaganda, but it definitely taught me that like, hey, these foods are actually the bodies of these animals that like you probably think are cute. So yeah, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. And like, yeah, do you guys remember like when you first learned what pork and beef are? Do you think that it would have been better to just know that you were eating animals? Like, do you feel like you were deceived? Or do you guys feel like, do you feel like they're cute? These words are cute and like we should just keep them. It's so interesting to me the way that we as a society think of meat and whether or not we have to separate ourselves from the concept of them being animals. And especially now in like this new era of alternative meats where people are trying to eat a certain, this, this certain way, supposedly without any of the negative uh, negative consequences. So let me know in the comments um, or drop me a DM on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Anyway, I think that's it for me. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of confidence to go out and get some rabbit. If you do feel like it and if you're within like the shipping range of Valley Farmstead, I highly recommend that you go to Valley Farmstead. They are one of the coolest farms I've ever interacted with and are like seriously doing amazing work. Please hit subscribe comment again your answers to those questions or comment any questions that you still have about rabbit that you want to have answered before you like take the dive thank you all so much for joining me today this is butchery 101 i'm christina glenoga please follow me here instagram and on tiktok and we'll see you guys soon bye